Yeah, dude, I've honestly been considering um, bringing Terry back. Have you ever eaten something so delicious you wish you could uneat it and eat it again without puking? Terry was the most delicious trout I've ever eaten in my life. I don't think it's possible to eat Terry again, even though we caught seven other Terry's and I ate all those and they tasted pretty much the same. Terry was special. I think Terry deserves to be immortalized within the digital realm. All it takes is a little bit of magic. Welcome back to my channel. On this episode, we're going to be immortalizing Terry the Trout, the best trout I ever caught and ate. I'm about to show you the entire summoning, the entire digitalization process that I went through to immortalize Terry the Trout. Some men prefer to fish, others to model the fish. For me, it's both. Today, I'm going to be telling you the story of Terry the Trout. This is a meticulously planned video. So, if I forget anything, it's probably not my fault. I've been gone for something like two months in on in different continents and then I got the plague coming back from one of said continents <laughs> this all started with fishing I have not gone bow fishing before it's the type of fishing where you actually stand on a boat with a bow and arrow and right at the little fishies it's quite hard because you have to actually like aim below where the fish is depending on how deep the fish is because of refraction which hilariously enough i actually knew <laughs> before going into it because of doing um water simulations and water <laughs> materials so who knew tech art can give you real life skills as well wow isn't that neat we did that we brought the bows out we we're gonna go hunting for carp they're very invasive where i live they get huge, they don't taste very good, they taste like detritus and bugs. I go out with my girlfriend and her younger brother who is who is taking us around on this boat. We're sitting out there with bows and stuff and there's no carp. It was a um, rainy, cold day. The carp didn't want to spawn, they didn't want to have babies, they wanted to stay in bed all day. So we decided to go trolling and trout fishing instead. The trout were hungry, they were ravenous, they were biting like crazy. We we caught some other fish, threw them back, bald eagle came down, ate the other fish, we threw back because we weren't allowed to catch them, you're not allowed to feed a bald eagle either, but the bald eagles don't give a about what you're allowed to do, and it saw we put the fish back in the water, swooped down right in front of us, ate it, boom, dude, prime. Anyway, getting back to it, we were trout fishing, and then we caught Terry. We caught like seven of Terry's brothers, but Terry, we didn't freeze it. We went right home, cooked Terry up, dude, ate Terry on the spot. Terry was delicious. Terry was the best trout I've ever eaten, hands down. There's never been a more delicious trout. It tasted like salmon, but without the parts of salmon that don't taste that good, instead replace it with the good parts of trout. That's what Terry tastes like. And Terry was so good, I got to thinking, what if we model Terry? I had to figure out what kind of 
trout Terry was. I didn't do that. I just Googled trout and I picked like three trouts that look kind of cool. And then I used the pictures of Terry I took myself to, you know, do the coloring and all of the stuff. But probably some of my, my Terry bone structure is from possibly a different kind of trout because this is a, um, uh, look, I'm still waiting on trout knowledge from someone. I reached out and said, hey, what kind of trout is this? We're going to get back to that soon. I will let you know what kind of trout it is once I know myself. I started this out in Blender. I didn't have a plan exactly for how I was going to create Terry other than I was going to do a block out in Blender and then I was going to try and use Blender for sculpting. Now traditionally I use ZBrush for sculpting and I much prefer ZBrush because it is an amazing sculpting tool even though the UI is a little janky. But instead because I don't actually have access to ZBrush at the moment I was like okay we use Blender. I don't like sculpting in blender it's not very fun so instead i tried something new it's a software called 3d code i believe it's a ukrainian team working on the software they're still updating it constantly but it's voxel based which means that you don't have to worry about topology and you could switch back and forth between voxels and the topologized mesh which is using like polygon modeling so this is cool because that means you could sculpt infinitely on voxel based mesh you don't have to worry about your topology stretching out you don't have to worry about retopologizing it. You don't have to worry about Dynamesh. You don't got to worry about any of that, dude. You just get to sculpt infinitely. If you want to sculpt in a circle until you got like, like a really big, like, unicorn horn you could just straight up sculpt that without ever having to stop in one single stroke dude it's uh, actually pretty sick i didn't really feel like truly really actually learning 3d coat fully and instead you know we're we're just we're just trying to get terry back dude we're just trying to get terry back i gotta say like 3d coat was good its brush engine was okay it has a lot of good features i didn't dig deep enough into it to give it a real strong opinion zbrush just works. ZBrush is amazing. I have a lot of experience with ZBrush. All of the brushes are there. I know which brushes I like. I know which brushes I don't like. I have my own brushes. I have a bunch of stuff. So it's like ZBrush still is the best one for me. We did some um, uh, refining in Blender, some some little tweaks to the mesh, getting it all wrapped up, looking pristine, dude, because 3D Coat, I just got tired of using it, dude. I'm pretty sure I got, it was like two months ago, but it was just like, man, different UI, different hotkeys. It works great. It'll, it'll auto export and it'll decimate your stuff for you on export. It's, it's good. It, it's pretty clean for high poly, but dude, we couldn't do Terry dirty. I was gonna auto UV Terry because that's fast. And I was like, okay, let's auto topologize or maybe quad remesh it. I tried quad remesh, it wasn't giving me good results. Decimation was like not good results either for Terry. I wanted Terry to look good, dude. I wanted Terry to deform well. I was gonna do some simulations with him. I wanted a um good mesh. I wanted a good one. Yeah, so we went and we manually retopologized this Terry the Trout. That took like, I gotta say like at least four hours. Retopologizing the fish I thought would be really easy, but then I started working on the fins and I was like, dude, well, I don't wanna lose any detail on these fins. I want it to be like a realistic trout. Like I don't wanna do like game ready trout. I want like, this is a hero asset front and center, like the trout, you know what I'm saying? We manually retopologized it and it looked, it looked, it, the topology is fantastic. It's extremely high poly. I think the uh, whole fish is like 16K, 18K, something around there, tries. It's a lot, bro. <laughs> but it is clean topology deforms amazing. If this trout were to swim again, digitally in the digital sea, boy, he would be aerodynamic. He'd be fast and he'd be efficient and effective. He could probably win fish, Talladega, hands down, fins up, no problems, no questions asked, dude. This is a fast, sleek trout. After that, we had the topology, we had the UV and the trout was looking pristine. I had to bring it into Substance Painter. We we're gonna do all the texturing in Substance Painter, which again, apparently you could do that in 3D Coat. Was not willing to learn that in 3D Coat, so we just brought it into Substance Painter. Now, I've never painted a trout I've actually never painted a fish before.
probably. I've probably done some things close to a fish, but I've never actually painted a fish. I started off by trying to procedurally paint Terry. Now, looking back on it, I can't remember if I went into Substance Painter or Substance Designer first, but I'll be showing footage from one of them in the background. So I started procedurally texturing Terry and it wasn't looking good. It was quite a tragedy, especially for how long I had invested my time into making sure the topology was delectable. Instead, I got frustrated and I brought myself into Substance Designer because the Substance Designer we were gonna be making the scales for Terry and I wanted some kind of procedural uh, scale material. I was thinking of bringing in the tool into um, Substance Painter so that I can have, you know, some parameters for like scale size, density, stretchiness, shininess, height, you know, all that. But instead, what I ended up doing is I made a scale pattern in Substance Designer, which looked pretty good and I just exported out like a texture map. I, I think I used the AO, I used the height, and maybe the color, and maybe the normal map as well, but I use those in weird ways and I use them for masking materials in Substance Painter. So my scales, they started to look good. I decided, screw it dude, we're hand painting this trout now. We're hand painting it all the way through. We're hand painting it in Substance Painter, procedural painting, it's not good enough for Terry. Terry's better than that. We can't go and spend six hours manually retopologizing a fish for YouTube and then procedurally texture it. No, instead, dude, we, we hand painted Terry. I hand painted that whole damn fish, bro. I, I hand painted it. It looked good though, it was worth it, I think. But the problem was, it's like, after that I was like, okay, we got a hand painted fish. I had to cheat some of it, like it's like some metallic because fish are weird. And then we, I had to bring it back in a blender because I'm like, okay, dude, it's rendering time. Like we gotta render Terry. This has been going on for like three weeks now. Terry was supposed to be like a three day project. Terry turned into like a three, three week project. And it wasn't looking good, dude. The renders were bad. Terry was not rendering well. We had to jump into some shader notes and I had to create a custom shader in Blender to make Terry the Trout feel like a real fish. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend this was a simple shader. It wasn't. And it's not a cheap shader either because I wanted it to be effective not efficient. And there's way better ways to actually make this shader that were way more efficient and would have rendered way faster and uh, probably would have looked exactly the same. But I was not concerned about that, bro. This shader, it has like, like mix shaders on mix shaders on mix shaders. I think there's like four separate mix shaders doing different things. But basically there is a environment map that is reflecting off of the scales depending on the angle you're viewing them at, as well as some fake holographic lighting similar to stuff you'd see on like a, a parking cone or like a stop sign where no matter what the ray of light reflects directly back at you, so if you send a beam at an object, doesn't matter what angle it's glancing off, it just shoots back straight into your eyeball. And that's basically what we did with Terry, but we only did it within the range of a certain angle so that it didn't just make it like one glowy giant Terry. It was just like, okay, if you're looking at the fish scales from, you know, uh, 30 degrees to like some other degree, like some, some trigonometry range, then no matter what, it's always gonna beam you straight in the eye and like, that made it feel really good dude that was like that was like a good start and then we had some metallic like crinkly almost um what are they called like uh like gold leaf yeah we had like a gold leaf effect under the skin that also only shows up from like, I, I use like a Fresnel shader to limit it to like a certain portion of the fish. So after messing with the, the Terry shader for like two days or three days alone, Terry was looking good. Damn. Well, it's been fun, but we're here today to finally send off our beloved Terry the Trout. Come with me as we throw him back into the river so he can once again be a fish. <laughs> the 
there he goes. Back to his natural habitat. We did it, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this or not like this. I'm not really sure because my planning, while robust, still needs some work. And so the format of the videos is likely to change in the future. Anyway, I would greatly appreciate some comments for feedback, support for Terry the Trout, support for me, support for um, people who do uh, complex shaders in Blender. I look forward to seeing you all again in the future. Peace out.